Whatever we do. Clifford Martis. Whatever we do, let's try to do it better. Our actions, our words, whatever it is, let us try to do it better. Success, they say, is a journey and not a destination. We can say, progress also is a journey and not a destination. Therefore, we need not feel complacent that we are doing fine. We must constantly be on the lookout for better performance. If I want to thank someone I can say, thanks. But suppose I say, thanks a lot, wouldn't it be better? Depending upon the time and the situation, we can try and improve this even further and say, I am very grateful to you, or, you have been of great help. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, and so on. This is a simple case of expressing gratitude. But when we think a little more, we can learn to do or say things in a better way by giving some thought to our action or speech. I had an appointment with a person, who was senior to me in our erstwhile company. I was a bit late and trying to make amends. I said, I'm sorry I made you wait. Oh. It's okay, he said, and added, it's a pleasure waiting for you. I felt flattered. One might argue that the other person might have said it without any thinking. Even then, I would say that I like to hear such statements unless, of course, they were said sarcastically. When we speak about saying or doing things better, a question arises about comparison, because better usually follows, than. Wise people say that we should compare ourselves with our own selves. I should compare my performance of last year and see whether I am doing better or not now. One of the ways in which we can do better is by adding words to our actions and also adding actions to our words. Let me tell you about an incident. I was waiting for the lift. The lift came down and I found that two fellows, shouldn't I say, persons or even better, gentlemen, started removing packets which were fully occupying the lift. I noticed that they did the job fairly fast giving me an impression that they did not want to delay me. In a little while, they finished the job and I got into the lift and went to my training center. In the class, I mentioned this incident and asked the trainees to explain how this particular situation would have been rendered better. A couple of trainees did mention that the two gentlemen who were removing the packets could have said just something like, One minute sir, we'll finish in no time. Nice answer. Don't you agree? It would have made such a difference. But another trainee said, you could have thought of lending a helping hand to them. You go to a shop and ask for something. Most often the shopkeeper or the salesperson reaches out to the item you want and hands it over to you. No word. Nothing. Suppose he were to say just two words, Yes sir. In posh restaurants the waiters or stewards do say, Good morning, or some such thing and then ask for your order. But have you noticed how the waiters behave in most of our restaurants, in spite of the fact that the food and ambience are quite good? 
They usually come and stand near you expecting you to place the order. Suppose they say just two words, yes sir. Doctors treating patients can make their jobs much better if they choose to talk nicely to their patients. A word here or a word there. Most doctors are serious or even stern. Probably they imply that they are doing serious work. But talking nicely and reassuringly is also a part of treatment, isn't it? It is said that a couple of friendly words from the doctor or even a smile can go a long way in making the patient feel better. On a certain occasion I hailed an auto rickshaw and said, City Hospital. The auto man did not look at me but simply, downed, the meter. Well, it was a clear indication that he was willing to take me to my destination, but wouldn't it have been much better if he had said, Yes sir, please get in, or simply said, Come. The least he could have done was to make a gesture with his face or hand. I did mention the point to him and to my good luck he agreed with me. On another occasion I called an auto and said, Central Market. He said, Sorry sir, it's time for me to hand over the auto, and so saying he hailed another auto and asked, Guru, Central Market. That man agreed and I got in. This shows that we can say, no, also in the most pleasant way. Even a very ordinary thing like giving alms to a beggar can be done in a better way. Here, take this, we can say nicely and with some feeling. What do most people do? They refuse to look at the beggar. If he persists, they indicate that he should go ahead. Some say, Monde ho papa, go further, or some such thing. Some don't say anything but try to shun the beggar by their body language. And finally, when the giving becomes inevitable, they give grudgingly. If we decide to give alms, should we not do so gracefully? In Mumbai they have a nice way of saying, Mafkaro, please excuse. It's a nice way of saying, sorry, I am not able to give. We have a number of notices, instructions and orders like, no parking, no smoking, no admission, visitors, cars not allowed, and so on and so forth. Don't these terms sound rather rough? True, people are trying to be brief because brevity is a genuine need in such public notices. But we have seen that, at least in the case of smoking, people have made some innovation. Nowadays they write, thank you for not smoking. Can't we try to use better terms in other cases also? I am not suggesting that in every case we should say, thank you for, we can think of innovative methods to make our orders. Instructions and notices sound more polite, more polished. In South India, some restaurants are famous for the tasty fare they offer. Naturally therefore, they have big rush and it is a problem for the management. In one such restaurant I saw a board, don't sit here for a long time. How odd. Can they not say the same thing in better words? Luckily, I saw in another place a board, please make room for waiting customers. In yet another place I saw a notice which read, kindly make room for waiting friends. It is our practice to be brief while sending telegrams. Here again the reason is brevity. 
We want to save words in order to cut costs. So, if someone wants to request his brother to receive him at the station, he might send a telegram somewhat like this. Reaching Mumbai Thursday, stop, shut up the, stop, meet station. Now just for the sake of one single word the telegram has become totally devoid of any courtesy. What could be the additional cost of adding, please? Nowadays the telegram has been relegated to the background due to the coming of the telephone and the internet. But have we solved the issue of courtesy? Don't we see, or should I say, here, people ask, who's this, instead of saying, may I know who is calling please? In a certain book on communication, I found a very interesting method of asking who is calling. If you call Mr. Patel in his office, his secretary will receive the call and before connecting to Mr. Patel she would want to know who the caller is so that she can inform the same to Mr. Patel. What does the secretary say? She does not say, who's this? Or even, may I know who is calling, please? She says, can I tell Mr. Patel who is calling, please? The idea is this you want to talk to Mr. Patel. I do not wish to know who you are. But I must tell Mr. Patel who is calling him. Therefore, I am requesting you to tell me who you are. Consider how we respond when someone says, thank you, to us. In the olden days people used to say, don't mention it. Later people started using the phrase, it's all right. Nowadays people say, you are welcome, or simply, welcome. One method of our improving our communication with others is to put, you, before, I, as far as possible. Consider some words like union, united, building, guiding, trusting, communication and so on. In these words, the letter, U, comes before the letter, I. This indicates to us that we should try to put, U, that is the other person before I. If I wish to thank someone for the nice party I can say, your party was so enjoyable. I thank you. Another instance, your letter made me very happy. It may be noted that there is no limit to the improvement we can make in our action or speech. Nor can we say that a particular action or form of speech is the best. There is no formula. What is best may depend on the occasion and it may be possible to continuously make improvement. The whole idea is to be aware of the need and importance of doing and saying things better and better.